welcome back to the mortuary, my creepies. For those of you just shambling in here, I am Reanimate Her, your queen of scream. And today, I want to welcome you to Coffee Chat of Horrors Autopsy Edition. Uh, before we get to slicing and dicing of the film, if you have any questions or input, please post them down below in the comments. Also, if you're new here and you haven't done it already, slash that subscribe button. And for those of you that have been here and are returning, thank you very, very much. Make sure you hit that slight, that slash that like button and stab that subscribe button. Now, let's dive into the morgue. Like scary movies and coffee. The following show is based on research on horror movies and what goes on behind the scenes of your favorite scary movies. Horde Entertainment or Reanimate Her is not responsible for the macabre and horror that you are about to witness. Viewer discretion is advised. TerraVision was released in 1986. Let's dive into this. TerraVision was released in 1986 and written and directed by Ted Nicolau. It is a horror comedy that you need to see. So let's dive into the plot. Stan installs a satellite TV for his family, but soon he picks up a signal from another planet and his television system becomes a gateway between the two. A creature comes into his apartment and only their son Sherman sees it, but his parents don't believe the boy. Isn't that how it always happens? Just a little heads up here. Uh, the parents of the Putterman household are swingers. And welcome. So let's see who's in the morgue, shan't we? Now, this movie is starring Mary Warnoff as Raquel and Jarrett Graham as Stan. They are the head of the Putterman family and swinger extraordinaire. Oh, yes, they are swingers. Now, you may know um, Garrett Graham uh, from the movie Child's Play 2. He played uh, Phil Simpson, as well as Mary Warnoff. Uh, you may know her from Night of the Comet as Audrey White. Yeah. Now, when you go and see this film, you'll be able to put names to their faces. Uh, Diane Franklin, who plays Susie, she's the crazy punk daughter with the boyfriend named O.D. Now, you may know Diane Franklin from Bill and Ted's excellent adventure as Princess Joanna. Mm-hmm. And Chad Allen plays Sherman, the brother of... The boy that nobody believes. Yeah, poor Sherman. Now, you may know Chad from uh, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman as Matthew Cooper. He also plays in a ton of other TV shows and films. Uh, Burt Remsen as Grandpa. He plays a conspiracy nut with a bunker that's filled with guns and ammo and explosives and has this theory on lizard tails. For food, he says that the lizard tails grow back. So you pull them off, you make them into a jerky, and you eat them. Yeah, kind of uh, a little crazy there. Now, you may know Bert Remsen from the film Walk in the Park as Ken Sherry. He's also been in a ton of other TV series from back in the day. Uh, our next fun person is Jonathan Grease. He plays the role of O.D., the uh, punk boyfriend of Susie, and this guy says, dude, uh, more than I actually like. Now, you may know John Grease uh, from the film Real Genius as Laszlo Holyfeld. This is one of Heavy's favorite films. Uh, let's talk about Jennifer Richards. She plays the role of Medusa, the hostess with the Moses cleavage. Uh, yeah, she plays a horror hostess in this film. Uh, you may know Jennifer Richards from Star Trek Next Generation as the Painted Dancer. Mm-hmm. Now let's get on to the swinger one. Uh, Alejandro Rey uh, plays Spiro. He is a swinger slash bartender and has an awesome accent. Now you may know Alejandro from The Flying Nun as Carlos Ramirez or from Fantasy Island TV show as Don Juan. Yeah. And uh, Randy Brooks plays Cherry. She is the significant other of Spiro, the second swinger. And uh, you may know her from The Man with Two Brains 
as Fran, the man with two brains, is pretty friggin' amazing. Uh, now, let's dive in and gut this movie together. Uh, did you know that Terrorvision was filmed in Italy? Yeah. Filmed in Italy. What a beautiful place. Uh, there is no information on the budget for this film. However, we do know that this film was released in 256 theaters. And it brought in a box office total of a little over $320,000. Not a lot, but I'm not even sure how much the budget was. Terravision was pulled from theaters in four days. I don't know why this film is hilarious. It's not offensive in any way. It's not bloody or gory. But anyways, it was pulled from theaters four days after release. Uh, did you know that the poster for this movie that you can see here was designed before the script was even written? Yeah, they made the movie poster before the script was written. Uh, in the prologue of this film, uh, there is a model of the USS Enterprise and it can be seen upside down, missing its engines and painted to look like a building on the planet Pluton. You can see that right here. Ah, uh, the planet Pluton. Mm, crazy little planet. They have weird, strange pets. Uh, director Ted Nicolau and production designer Giovanni Natalucci scouted swingers pads in Los Angeles in order to get ideas for the Putterman household. They interviewed and sat down with swingers to find out about the swinger lifestyle, what goes on, how things rock and roll quite fun, hey? And uh, when you see the home of the Putterman family, it definitely looks like a swinger's pad. A hundred percent. Also, there is a brief MTV clip shown of the band Wasp, W-A-S-P, and the song called Tormentor, as well as the character Odie Riley is also wearing a Wasp t-shirt. Who loves the band Wasp? Let me know down below in the comments. This is also the theatrical release debut for Chad Allen. Yeah, very first film for Chad Allen. Um, the initial appearance of Bert Ramsen, Grandpa, his character is based on General Hershey Bar, a well-known 1960s Los Angeles anti-war street performer. Now, I may have to look up this General Hershey bar and do a short video on what General Hershey bar was about. I think that'll be a good idea. Uh, the Hungry Beast, who is the main antagonist in the film, he is voiced by Frank Welker. Mm -hmm. Now, the Hungry Beast is a satirical symbol of society's perception of television, especially the mind-numbing effects. It was criticized as inducing its audience. Thus, The Hungry Beast was meant to represent in many ways the TV audience as a whole. Back in the day, they were thinking that people were watching too much television. Aha! Uh -huh. Nowadays, we've got zombies that roam the streets looking at their cell phones like this constantly and not even watching where they are walking. Uh, now, uh, let's dive into the autopsy report. Yeah, it's my favorite part. Uh, the body count is 12, eight men, four women. The kill count is the hungry beast, 11, and Medusa, one. Yes, Medusa is, she does kill somebody. Now, um, Norton is eaten alive off scene by the hungry beast. Uh, Grandpa Putterman is melted by the hungry beast. Uh, Cherry, she's eaten alive off screen, and all we see is her head in the swimming pool. Uh, Spiro, her yeah, Cherry's significant other, is also eaten alive on scene, though, by the hungry beast. Stanley Putterman, his torso gets filled with acid. Uh-huh, it's crazy. Gets filled with acid and then eaten. But unfortunately, we don't see the eaten part on screen. Uh, Raquel Putterman eaten alive off scene as well by the Hungry Beast. It's a shame that we didn't get to see these, but I understand. Uh, O.D. gets his skull melted by the Hungry Beast. That's a really cool scene in this film. Uh, we know that Officer Nutke, he comes to save everybody. Uh, actually, he comes to serve a warrant to Sherman uh, for a prank call, which wasn't a prank call. But anyways, he gets eaten. 
He does. We see the fight lead up to it, uh, but we don't actually get to see him eaten. Uh, downside. Uh, Plusar, who is the alien from Pluton, his head explodes when Medusa cracks his helmet. She mistakenly thinks that he's the hungry beast. Now, the kids call Medusa on her hotline and tell her to come because they got a real monster. She doesn't believe them, but she shows up anyway. Now, Susie Putterman and Sherman Putterman, um, they also get swallowed and digested by the hungry beast. And we also see here Medusa. She gets swallowed and digested by the hungry beast, and she becomes part of the hungry beast. Very similar to like the movie Thing, uh, where the thing can take control over something, eat it basically, and become that person, morph into that image, whether it's a dog or whatever. The hungry beast can do the same thing. And uh, there's a really cool scene with the family, uh, the Puttermans, uh, head of the household, in bed with the swingers. It's hilarious. Make sure you check that scene out as well. Now, we're going to get into the best death. Yes, I'm uh, really excited uh, for this section. Um, best death is having Odie's skull melted by the hungry beast. That one I really enjoyed, even though um, uh, Plusar's kill was pretty cool, too. And so was, uh, there's a few others, but my favorite one out of this one is OD. If you've seen this film, which is your favorite death scene? Let me know down in the comments. Now, the blood and gore section. Um, not much blood or gore involved, but there is a hell of a lot of slimy goo and goopy stuff in this film. Like, there is a never-ending plethora of goop and slime. Uh, the practical effects mwah, are amazing. Love the practical effects. Uh, let's get on to the sexual appeal and nudity. Mm hmm. Well, this film has got a lot of sex appeal to it. Uh, first off, we get to see a scene with Cherry and Spiro get disrobed. Then they're in their Speedo and bikini, which, mm hmm, right? Uh, then there is Medusa, the horror hostess with the most cleavage. A nice zoom in shot of the girls. And then we have lots of graphic paintings shown throughout the walls of the Potterman household. And in every scene, you will see these images. Uh, they are all naked. And some of them have some bondage play in it as well. So make sure you keep an eye out on all of the artwork in the Potterman home. Um, also, Mr. Potterman leads the couple into a place and calls it the pleasure room. Now for the boob count. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't really many real boobs in this besides the cleavage of Medusa. Uh, so we only get to see boobs in the painting. And there are several paintings that show many boobs. So unfortunately, a zero real boobs. My review on this show, uh, I loved it. Uh, I found TerraVision to be hilarious gem from the 80s. Uh, if you need a visual of what the 80s were like, TerraVision definitely gives that to you, especially Odie and Susie. Um, I definitely feel that this film was uh, beyond its time. Uh, the practical effects, the animation, the puppeteering, beautifully done. I, I also thought this story was quite solid. If you were unable to actually visually see uh, the movie and you just listened to it, you would hear a great story. It's solid from the beginning to the end. An alien uh, that's throwing out its pet because its pet became too destructive, uh, floated its way into Earth and, and uh, mutates through the TVs and satellite systems. And it comes down and eats people. It, it's such a great story. Great time. Um, should you go and see this film? Uh, hell yes, you should go and see this film. I give it a four out of five limbs. And the reason why I give it four limbs because I feel there could have been more nudity. Huh. But it's a great film regardless. Um, I want to thank you all for watching this video. And I do hope you enjoyed this edition of Coffee Chat of Horrors Autopsy. Uh, if you want to catch this live, I do this live with chat discussion over on twitch.tv forward slash reanimator. Links are down below. Also... Make sure to join us in Discord on August 21st because we will be watching the next autopsy film. Uh, and this film was recommended over on my Patreon page by Monkey Van Meowerton. We will be watching Night of the Demons.
Yes, we will. Uh, Night of the Demons will be autopsied next on August 28th at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time over at the morgue on Twitch. So if you're interested in checking us out live and being a part of the live discussion, please go down there, click that link, and uh, give us a follow. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know down below. Have you seen Terra Vision? Did you like Terra Vision? I want to know. Anyways, my undead family, thank you so much. And I will slash us all later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video and I need to do a huge shout out to my Patreon peeps. Thank you so much for investing in me and my content. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for giving me your hard earned money. I greatly appreciate you and I could not do this without your contribution to this channel, to this content that I create. So thank you very, very much. Harjar, Candy Thiessen, Deadwalk. Devil Dog, Zombie Gut, Erratic Agent, Fielder's Choice, Haley Dawn, Bearcat Kitten, It's Mr. Scott, Mr. Watson, Mischief Maker, Ms. Delicious, Night Jammy, Petro Bull, Macabre Tavern, Serial Killer, Byron, Celtic Wolf, Dahi, Eve Brutal, Monkey Van Meowerton, OG Chris Redfield, Gamer Sass, The Goblin King Josh, Fry, The Lament Butterfly, and Go Klepto. You guys have no idea how grateful I am for your contribution. Thank you so very much for everything that you guys do. I love your guts. Want more of your Scream Queen? Of course you do. Who doesn't? Please make sure to check out my other horror-related content down below. And if you want to become part of the undead, and hang out with me outside in my cemetery. Make sure to become a Patreon member. Check it out right there. Or one of the ghouls here on YouTube by clicking on the join button down below. And if you are craving more of the dark macabre content that I create, make sure to check out my Instagram. Uh-huh. And if you want to rock out with your... Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. But if you want to rock out in some awesome horror gear, make sure to check out my merch store right there. Until next time, my creepies. I will slash you later. Creep it real. Bye-bye.